Let's see. They should have just had a tag. So. Let's see. Go to. Uh, here you go. Let's just go back to your timeline and just search visualize passage in your search. Okay, sorry about that. Visualize passage. So go right there and just search visual. Nope, oh, sorry, no, you're not going to. Is it all separate words? All separate words. Well, I've been trying. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm your host for this evening, Wilson Kevich. <clears throat> um, so I'm supposed to give a demo, um, and I've been trying to figure out what to do, what single thing to do, and uh, and I, as usual, I'm pulled in many directions, so I, I have not quite made up my mind. So any one of these could go off the rails, any one of them could maybe turn into something, and they're all sort of different. So um, my approach probably will be um, uh, to wing it. So some are, um, I, I, I sort of have a, a little bit of an idea of how I want to proceed, very little idea. Um, I've got one of a, of a truck that I'm working on right now, which I'm going to distort a lot. Um, this is just my, my basic preliminary for it. I just want to play with the shapes um, on that. I've also got a portrait that I'm doing of, uh, of, an, of the actor, and I'm blanking on his name, played Omar in, in The Wire. Um, so I'm just blocking in a figure, you know, a face right now. I'm gonna, what I'm going to try to do is play with a little bit of the, of the technique for with the uh, some colored gesso, I mean clear gesso and uh, color overlays. So some things might be drying in the midst of other pieces being wet. And, um, and I'm also going to just play a little bit with different techniques that I've, uh, that I've been playing with recently. Um, so uh, there may seem like there's no rhyme or reason, and that's because there won't be. Uh, so uh, and this is kind of how I approach things when I'm, when I'm working in my own studio. Um, I'll just get an idea of just, I, I, sometimes the drawing part is the, is the part that it's the least, um, uh, the part I almost care about the least because it's like I just want to get something down and then just want to build on it or build from it. So, um, so I'm going to be jumping around. So that being said, uh, I'm probably going to light box something here. So I also, there is one more, more I was starting on, which is just a female. Right now, I just sort of blocked in a female where she's going to be. I'll probably put her on a red, um, you know, uh, sash. You know, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's almost like I've never done this before. Yeah, okay, well, it'll show up, I guess, in, at some point. This is actually, what this is, is this is actually, uh, it's a, um, it's probably one of the highest grade animation bond paper you can get. It's got a little bit of, an, of a warm tone to it. I've, I've used um, archival, uh, you know, bond layout paper, like advertising paper, you know, ad marker paper. Um, but I find that uh, I started, I just, I gave this a try and I actually really like it. It's very, there's a lot of, it's, there's a lot of plate like smoothness to it, which I really like. So it takes it takes the pen work, you know, quite quite easily. And it's a little bit, especially if I'm using the, the pilot, the parallel pens, um, which are almost like just drawing with a an ice skate. You know, 
It's like it's got a very thin side to it, and, and this is the widest one, six millimeters wide, and then smidgen wide. But it's a uh, they're manufactured by Pilot. Actually, so I can sort of see what uh, how the um, you know the zigging and the zagging. So. So in a way, I guess in a way, this is going to be sort of both of us, but all of us, sort of seeing how this is going to go. I have nothing. And Bill, Bill was incredibly he planned and planned it out. Like his his yesterday, his talk and demo yesterday, he was much more planned out than I. And I, but I tend to fly a little bit more by the by the seat of my pants. Um, and uh, so there's a likelihood, like I said, this is going to crash and burn. But let's all have fun. Any it's also going to seem like I'm not doing, I may be, might be rushing through some of the pieces that I'm doing or some of the portions of it, but part of that is also um, to show, because like I, I am going to play around with the, with the clear gesso layer and uh, then I'm also going to be doing something with uh, some ink that I've got, which is not India ink. There are uh, problems with most fountain pen ink is that it, it tends to be dye-based. Um, there's a whole group of new kinds of inks that they're coming out with, which are vegetable-based, which actually have a little bit more, they're they actually quite light fast, but yet they have some of the qualities. They're not impermeable, which means that you can reactivate them. Which is very different from acrylic, and I've used acrylic ink, but there are certain things that happen with uh, with these different colored inks that are what I love about them is that you can actually put a line down, and let's see these how these pens have traveled. We'll see if they actually allow me to make a line. So now, um, like here, I'll just hit this with water. And this would probably happen if I were using um, regular India ink as well. Wait a minute, that was the, the wrong one. Or that, wait, oh no, that's actually, in, no, it's, that's exactly doing, okay, it is doing exactly what I thought it was going to do. Okay, where's it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I really like a lot of their stuff. You know, so, I mean, they're pretty. Ar I mean, I think they're kind of archival, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think so. So, you can kind of see how it bleeds like that. So, it, what's fun about it, especially on this paper, the paper will will tend to buckle and and whatnot, but uh, you know, you can blot. But like I said, I'm going to be. How many of you are using a light a light table or a light box out there? You are? Okay, great. It's a it's an invaluable invaluable tool. Okay, so I is it oh it's yeah, not gonna be able to see because it's lit from underneath, but where's <laughs> Harvey Keitel and Pulp Fiction. <laughs> and Mr. Wolf. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be thinking so that it might, it might show through, yeah. um, or it might show up. I go all the way down and turn into the contrast. Yeah, which I'm going to be going over.
see the yeah, I'll see if, we'll see if, if uh, drawing on it makes any any difference. Uh, say again? No, I think it would blow it out even more because it's more light coming through it. Is this the same ink? This is a, this is a pilot ink. Um, it's a, like a little bit more of a burgundy. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just looking at a, uh, I've got a, an, a photo of an old truck here. And what I'm doing is I'm going to, uh, I'm not following it exactly. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm doing everything I possibly can to be, and to do a very ugly sort of bizarro distortion um, of the fenders. And you know, here's the, the photo. You can all sort of see it. So, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, rusted out and, and uh, jalopy-ish. Uh, but uh, hopefully I'm going to try to give it a little bit more of personality um, according to, to myself. I should have a bib. <laughs> All right. So. You won't spread the, my jacket to spread the fire? Um, I, well, apparently this stuff is going to be, like, washable, so you know, I'll just wear my battle scars. Now, I'm not making any effort to keep the lines pristine or clean. I'm actually just getting as raw and crooked and ugly as I possibly can, because I want to capture the, the awkward effect of it. I mean, that, like this, that this truck has just seen better days. It, uh, it dims down a bit. Let me see if I can actually do that. Is that better? Yeah. Better? Yeah. Okay. Whoa. Now I can't see. Modern technology. This is actually, I, I think this is an Esterbrook 355. I, I buy them on, uh, online. And I've used a whole bunch of different pens. I've got a, a large assortment of nibs. I mean, some of them don't travel well because they end up getting um, bent. Um, but other ones that I do use, like, it depends on so certain inks. That it, they, they'll, the, the nibs will spread apart. I find that when I'm getting a new nib, I'll end up having to kind of abuse the, the nib quite a bit like by turning it and pressing down on it backwards to sort of bring in a little bit more flex to it and, and you know, back to that, if that phrase about hurting something. It's like I, I end up trying to hurt the tools and, and, and f break them in. So like when you're working with a uh, pen and ink, you always, I mean, the, invariably you get a brand new nib and the nibs have, have gotten really kind of abysmal over the years. The quality of them has really gone down. But um, when you get a good one, it, and it, when it starts to break in and you get that real nice thick and thin, you know, and flexibility and, and you, can, you can draw with it and there's no spattering or catching on the paper, um, that usually means you probably have like 24 hours before the nib breaks. It's like, you know, because you, know, you got, it's like enjoy that sweet spot, you know. Oh yeah, I mean like I'll, some of these, these like this one is, I, I, I work it back. What I'll do sometimes is, if you can, I don't know if you can see the, it's a pretty straight, oh it's there, okay, sorry. Straight forward on the, uh, in my, other camera. Oh, this one, there we go. All right, you know what? <laughs> um, 
What I do sometimes is I actually create a little foot, a little, uh, it's, very, it's very straight. I'll just, sometimes I'll just find a, a very, like a tight little pen, like a pen cap, and I'll stick it in the, in, like, in the pen cap or in a bottle, bottle cap, and I'll just sort of bend it up slightly so it has a little bit of a, of a foot to it. And I can get a little bit of a thick and, like a, a little bit more flexibility of a thick and thin than if I, uh, if I don't. So you can see like the lines are, are, there's a lot of wobbly quality and I don't, um, I could take the time to, <clears throat> to do all the lines like sort of exactly how, you know, they should be in, in terms of thick and thin and, but again, I'm trying to give it a little bit of a personality here and, uh, and I find that when I start to really get tight with being absolutely spot on about like trying to be faithful to something. Um, I, I, again, I tend to start feeling quite tight um, and quite claustrophobic. So even when, I mean, I, I, I work very tight and I can work tight, but I find that if I do it for too long, everybody sort of has their own, their own working methods. But I find that when I do, um, a, when a lot, I go into for a lot of tight rendering, I'll always feel, start to feel a little bit hemmed in and claustrophobic and I, like I need to uh, escape and so what happens is that I'll end up going, pulling back and then just going in and just sort of messing with the picture because I feel like I start to get into a very small area, a very small tight area of like, you know, focusing in and, and it gets very um, uh, like tunnel vision. So what happens is I always try to step back after that. And it's tight enough, it's finished enough, but I, 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 I like when there's like a lot more loose passages in, on pieces. So I'll end up going back into those. And uh, uh, so there's, there's, for me, the right blend of uh, tight and loose. Okay, now this other fender. I made a couple of lines here where I had started thought, thought about the idea of it going out even further, which I'm gonna I'm gonna do right now. So this this truck, if it were to be on the road, would make absolutely no sense. I mean, it would it would not certainly probably would not be able to be driven. No, actually it's not. It's uh, You can tell by looking at my complexion, I have absolutely no problem with any of my... <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Um, no, it's, uh, there are some things that are quite toxic. This is not one of them. Um, I mean, I wouldn't recommend drinking it, um, but uh, I mean, I've got bleach here and lighter fluid here and alcohol here and water here, water there, scotch over there, <laughs> coffee here, um, ink here. So, put them all together. Yep, we're, we're, we're got fixings here. So. What would you use the bleach for? Well, you'll see. You know, that's one of the things I'm actually using this for. So you'll see. If it, you know. Again, I'm. I'm trying to sort of view this as like I'm if if. I'm making a, a bad drawing. It's like I don't want to, I almost don't want to worry about whether the drawing is a good drawing or not. It's a, because um, I'm using this as an opportunity to, to play and find out how far, again, how I can, how far I can push something and see if it, if it holds together. So, um, so by really going bizarro, you know, with this left fender and pushing it way out, it's a, uh, it, it, it's lost a, le uh, a certain level of symmetry, but. Uh, but you know, when you say that, Bill, about, I mean, you know, whether it's a, not a good drawing or a good, you know, I mean. Well, it's like act, an accurate drawing more than, you know, it's like yeah, a, I'm not being, I'm not being faithful to the reference. Because um, the best drawing. 
Well, it's it's that it's like that it's walking that line between being able to draw faithfully what you see and represent you know represent it, and then there's drawing what you see and, and or seeing it and then trying to interpret it in a way that feels uh, kind of fluid and like much more along the lines of again a level of personality and. Uh, and again, since I probably want to also get into doing kind of a somewhat of a painting with this, I'm also trying to, uh, well, not, again, we'll see how much of a painting it actually turns into. But, because uh, it is, a, right now, it is a line drawing with ink. Did you find this picture? Or this picture? It's, a, it's a, a, just a, a, I went through uh, some images. Uh, Online, I just found some old trucks and stuff. And I mean, I'll I'll do that when I travel. I'll find some stuff. But there's, uh, well, I'm always on the lookout, especially since I do a lot of comic books. I find that ha the idea of having you can't have too much reference, you know, that might be never be used. But it's just it it becomes like a a second nature to just simply um, hunt the stuff down and just, okay, I'm going to save that. You know, I may never need it, I may never use it, but. And again, I could be, I could do this in watercolor. I could like block it out in pencil and then just go back into it with, with watercolor or or oil. Now a little bit of, let's see this. This is, now this is just water. So it's, it's actually, I mean, you're getting some like, these interesting little rivulets starting to happen here. Block. So it's giving a, you know, it's, it, 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 the, the running and the, the rivulets and the spatter and all that stuff, it's, it's adding a level of texture, you know, to it that, uh, you know, so. Again, no. Real rhyme, no reason in terms of. Okay, I'll maybe be able to make it sit into a somewhat of a landscape. No, I have a, I have large. I have I have several different light tables that I that I use when I'm working. This is like the one that's sort of more of the travel the travel size. Um, is the transparency of the animation um, paper? Well, I like. The primary reason for that. Uh, yeah, one of the things I like about the the transparency of of the paper is that um, I can work really thin and keep. Um, you know, if I, if, especially if I've done a tight underdrawing, or if I've, if I've done a drawing, of, especially if it's a likeness, um, I can either project it down, which I've done sometimes, but um, a lot of times I like to work uh, as thin as I can and then mount it on the board, but so that I can actually get in and, and, and sort of capture a lot of what I've put down previously in terms of my roughs. But I find that each layer, each iteration, okay, here was a, a quick sketch which, which one? Yeah, maybe let me know. A quick sketch that I had done of possibly doing three women, you know, what, like with, with sort of white veiled hats, you know, and I, I, I already got the ideas in terms of the, the value arrangement. And then what I did was I went over that 
and I tightened it up somewhat more. Um, a lot of times I won't even do a, an, an underdrawing. I'll just start right in. And I'll probably do that as certain things dry um, so that you can see a lot of the different technique aspects of it as well um, that I'm going to be playing with. So. the brand of the animation paper you use? It's, um, I think the company that I order from is a brand called Lightfoot. Um, you know, and they have all different sizes. You know, there's some, there's the large panorama paper. And I usually buy it by, they, it comes in 11 by 17 t pads of, of 100 sheets. Um, and, uh, but it also comes in uh, slightly larger sizes, like uh, 17 by 13 and a half or something. It's, like, it's a lot wider. Uh, and then it also comes in, well, some versions of it come in the big panoramic sheets, you know, where the sheets are like this long and, and that tall. And, um, uh, and I buy, usually buy those by the ream. Does it come in three by three inches? What's that? <laughs> if, uh, only for only for bills, only for bills. It's a yes. When you say you project it down. Yeah, I have a. There's a. There's a bunch of art uh, art projectors. Um, so you're actually projecting, not like printing out at a small size. Uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm not uh, at you know in that place. I'm not really print you know doing it that way. I'm. Uh, there, I'll, I'll work all different ways. Uh, like uh, I'm working on a couple of canvases right now, 36 by 36, where um, one is a piece I'm doing for Twin Peaks, uh, the the dancing, you know, the red room and the dancing, you know, uh, forget the character's name, but uh, um, but uh, and then another one of a woman on a on a staircase. And what I did with those, I just I had done the drawing and, and I put it literally on a seed, like on a flash drive and then set the projector, you know, it's an, it's an art projector, an autograph projector, set it back about maybe six feet and, and set the canvas up vertically so it's actually totally perpendicular to the projector. And then I just took a, a bunch of markers and just marked it out. So, and then just, and then just dump it, you know, jump into the painting. So, um, okay, so let's just see here. And part of the thing, part of the problem of using multiple different tools and different multiple different media, is uh, kind of keeping track of what which one is going to do what. Um, And again, I, I haven't planned, I really don't know what's going to happen with this. It's like, um, so that's why I don't get too bent out of shape about the drawing, because to me, it's, the drawing is sort of, I mean, sometimes what happens is after a piece will turn out kind of okay, I'll go, I wish I would have taken a little more time with the drawing, but a lot of times it's, uh, it's, it's I'm so excited about the possibility of uh, seeing what will happen with the, with the technique that it may, uh, I don't. I don't want to feel too beholden or too uh, much a slave to the to the reference. So, all right. Now, right now, it, it looks kind of like a a solid sort of brown reddish mass with just like it looks sloppy, which is exactly what it is. Well, it looks like it kind of holds on the surface a little bit. Yeah, it, it, it can. And again, like here, I'm using like some water, maybe blot some up. Lift. But there is a, it's like again, different mixtures of inks. I mean, it comes, this certain brands, like the one, one I use right now, there's Herbin, H-E-R-B-I-N. 
uh, and there's another brand that I use which I don't have with me. But um, what, ha what will happen is, is that they will, um, uh, you mix, they, they, they don't advise you to mix inks together because it may affect how it, it interacts in your pen. But long, I mean, the ship might, that ship sailed for me in terms of destroying, <laughs> destroying, you know, any of my tools or utensils. It's like I'll, you know, I'll, I'll buy a, like, I'll treat myself to a really fancy, you know, fountain pen for like two, three hundred dollars, and then, you know, Destroy. then I'll, you know, I'll use no. it to, I'll, I'll use it to open like beer bottles or something, you know, <laughs> something idiotic like that. So, um, now, I probably should dilute this. This is going to probably take it right down to white. So. Change my idea what I'm going to give you for Christmas. Okay. Um, yeah, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna see what happens here if I, if it happens if, like I, hopefully I'll be able to stop it in time. This is now I'm gonna go with some bleach here. Let me turn off the light. Okay. God, that's an awful drawing. It's I'm hitting people in the front row. It's only bleach. <laughs> it's only bleach, folks. You'll. It'll burn! We'll find out who the witches are. Sorry. Did I get you? You okay? No. Okay. We're wearing our glasses. That's no. smart. No. Smart. Yeah, just did it. Actually, did it. Ta-da! All right. Now again, as far as how archival and all of this is or is not, um, I find that uh, you know that with, with advances in UV protection and things like that, you know, stuff will last a while. And but I tend to try to do most everything I do with archival quality things. But right now, I'm in, I'm in a, a period of sort of a little bit of exploration and trying to play a little bit. So um, so if it doesn't work out, then it, it, it doesn't work out, you know, and, uh, and by the time it does fade, I'll probably be underground, you know, or, you know, that is a, still alive, but hiding from the surface where, where we've destroyed everything, yeah. That's exactly what it is. All right, now. Now this is bleach mixed with a little bit of water. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm basically I'm doing with with the ink what you know what you'll see like Barney Fuchs do or whatever with uh, with some of the the oils. What's that? It leaves a stain where you lift it out. Bleach. Yeah, and actually, what a little it'll also change the color somewhat. Um, but one of the things I find is that, you know, by spattering or dropping things in, and the paper can take some abuse, which is actually kind of fine. Um, and again, when I start to plasticize it and adding a lot of uh, the acrylic and diluting and hitting it, you know, with water, I'm, I'm constantly sort of lifting it. I, I like working quickly to see what happens, so. So I'll be messing with values and losing things, but right now it's like it's it's still kind of wonky, but it's it's certainly you know if nothing else it has a certain kind of personality to it that I that I kind of like it. And then going back over areas that have been bleached, the bleach there might be some bleach residue that acts as a, a little bit of a, a, a an effect of. of Changing the color underneath. Um, and, uh, 
And again, there, there may be some other pieces I'm working on as well. So this is this piece I might put on the side somewhere, but let's just see. Now, I also have other colors that I could use, um, but I, like I, brought, I brought some gu uh, gouache and a couple of other different permanent inks, some paint. So again, I don't know at this point what's going to end up on this or not. So literally, like I say, I, I am, it is total seat of the, of the pants. Um, and I kind of enjoy that danger, you know, I mean, such as it is, it's like, you know, I'm not dealing with North Korea, North Korea but um, it seems like I can't stop making political comments. I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> now, this uh, this is there's a um, a site called Jet Pens, which is. Uh, which is a, a, a Japanese site, and it actually has a slew of different colored inks, um, different colored pen, you know, different kinds of pens, brushes, markers, and um, the this is these are two inks from Pilot. Um, but again, there are so many different brands, and you know, you can look up different light, like some of them have light, different light capability, like light, light protection capabilities. But the pens are, if you want to get the finest tip pens, you could go to Japan. So Jet Pens has, you can, the finest, that's beautiful. Gel and rollerball. Oh, yeah, they have all, all of those. Yeah. It's a terrible place. <laughs> well, it's, uh, I mean, you know you're, you're like a, an addicted artist when you, you know, when you go into an art store, you know, and it's like, you, you just, you lose your shit, you know? <laughs> it's like, you know. Okay, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> it's, I, feel like, I feel like Jim Carrey, you know? Like, <laughs> What's the most annoying sound? <laughs> it's what I mentioned yesterday about caring enough not to, not to give a shit. So you can see there's a little bit of what's happening right in here is that some of the water is interacting with the, if you can, t if you can tell, I, c I would pull this, I would stand this up, but it probably, there's a little bit of a of a yellow tinge that's coming through, yeah, we can see that. you know. And okay, now since I actually drew this tree in, I want to have it be a light tree. But because I can use bleach or acrylic or whatever, I'm just going to go right over it and not go not. When I work in watercolor, I paint around the lights, you know, around the whites. Um, right here, what I'm doing is I'm actually painting over every all the dark spots. And um, uh, uh, you know things that might be lighter because I can go in later and l either lift them out, paint them out with uh, opaques like gesso or, or acrylic paint. Um, but what I'm going to do is I am going to mount this, or at least if I'm not don't mount, I'm going to at some point fix it and then do a uh, uh, a little bit of the clear gesso. This is a, it's a, it's basically a kind of, um, I forget the name of the gray. I mean, the, I, the, I put these in, the, in these small squeeze bottles because the actual bottles they come in are, are these almost beautiful decanters and they're quite heavy. So um, I tried not, I tried to travel as light, plus the idea of traveling with a full bottle of, of you know, several full bottles of ink uh, in my luggage. Um, I've seen when, when things open up in luggage and it's not, it's like, you know, it's like CSI territory, you know. Um, They're glass too. Aren't they? They, those are glass, yeah. But I've also had 
um, like I get certain containers, like these are, have zippers on them, they're plastic, and they, they, they seem to do really well for travel purposes. But I've also got some of these, um, you know, the kinds of uh, watertight containers that have the, the real ones that you clap down and stuff. And like inside, it's like, you know, it could, it could go an explosion and nothing gets out, which is, which is, which is great. So. Um, there you go. But not bunnies, right? Okay. So, all right. Um, yeah, well, I've had trouble with TSA only in the sense, you know, I'm, uh, one time years ago I was traveling, well, there were two times, most, both times involved London. Um, I was traveling with uh, tubes of paint, like, you know, so this are just, these are just the mixing colors, Holbein mixing colors, which is basically the printer, printing colors. So, I, you know, I, could, I, I have a watercolor palette filled with all the different watercolor, you know, colors that I use. Um, a full palette if I want to do a straight watercolor, but sometimes if I just need, because I could, I could literally travel with a full bag, and like, and you know, clothes are kind of almost an afterthought. You know, it's like there's, there's like room with for all my paper and my pens, and you know, there have been plenty of times I've been stopped, you know, and they'll ask me, um, uh, you know, what I do, but by and large, it's like as long as there's no, you know. No, nothing untoward. They're, they're pretty cool. But the, the one time I was in, in flying into Loughton or Luton, uh, England, and not London, which is a, it's a smaller airport, the uh, uh, the customs guy took a, 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 a white tube of paint and squeezed it all out onto a you know a, like a plate, a surface, to make sure that there was nothing in in the, the you know the, the tube, and then he just was kind of a dick he didn't put it back in you know it's like I said, you know and it was sort of like I, it was like do you what you know it had to be white it had to be the white paint you know it's like no. so uh, now I, I what I've got here basically is sort of a, the breaking bad of, of chemicals in front of me it's like you know because I view I, I loved science and chemistry as a kid and I view everything that I work with on those, those terms. Everything, there's a lot of chemical interactions that are going on with oil, with acrylics, there's polymers and plast, you know, plastic, uh, plasticization, plastic, plasticizing, gazintite. Um, geez, I should put a little red dot on that. So let's just see. No, um, this there's no lighter fluid come, will come no, nowhere near this one right now. Right of, lighter fluid I use when I'm using colored pencils because it, it it dissolves the wax, um, and Prismacolors tend to be waxy. Caran not not Caran d'Ache. Um, I think Ever Everhard Faber. Um, They're No, uh, Polychromos by Faber Castell tends to be more oil based. So you can actually get different levels of interaction with, with them. So to me, everything that I, I end up working with on one level or another is that is you know trying to think of it from a chemical point of view. So here's next, now here I'm just blotting in with some some bleach. Have you used your white coupling? Yeah, yeah, I've used, I've used pretty much every. Because they're you know, not quite as waxy. Yeah, they're not as waxy, but it's also they have, like I've used watercolor pencils. As well, certain brands like uh, Caran d'Ache will have watercolor pencils. Water, they, they actually, they actually make a really wonderful crayon, uh, water-based like pastel, that it is just amazing to work with. Um, and uh, but they tend to be a little bit less uh, stable in terms of uh, integrity of keeping a point, because they kind of wear down a little bit. So. Can you get a color color yeah, you can. Um, I mean, there have been times that I've done with the. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm sort of doing both. I'm walking and chewing gum at the same time, which is impossible. But uh, 
you can get I can get certain brilliant colors. Like if I'll take I'll take a Carandash crayon, and I'll I'll just dip it in, in water, let it get kind of you know so, uh, like a little goopy, and I'll just sometimes I'll just brush that like tap it down, and then I'll or also grab a brush and I'll tip you know dip my brush in it. It's like it's almost like the watercolor sticks kind of a thing that you can get. So. Um, What's that? Which way? Left. There's the red dot right Oh, that's the dot underneath. It's the, uh, yeah. Yeah. I saw that too, and I'm going, boy, that's a really kind of cool. Right. Now, I use everything, um, uh, again, tool wise. Uh, I buy, you know, Long Q-tips. These right now, I think these are kind of like uh, uh, applicators for maybe like uh, eyeshadow or lipstick or whatever. But uh, all little, you can find all these little sticks and, and tiny applicators and daubers and things that you can kind of work with. That um, you know, I just I see them. I just you know, I'll, I'll go and I'll find like in, in a supermarket they'll have like turkey skewers or something. I'll just buy those because I know at some point I'm end up using them for something. So. Can you see that happening? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that bleach? Yes. Is it straight bleach or a guy with it? Let me, let me, case. Okay. <laughs> That's straight. <laughs> bleach neat. Yeah, yeah, bleach neat. Yeah, that's one thing you should be careful of. That's why uh, I'll either use really awfully old brushes or I will, um, you know, salute as they, you know, <laughs> as they die. And it's like, thank you, you've, you've served me well, goodbye, you know. Okay. So. okay, so this is kind of where this one is. It's a, it's a... It's an entire sort of. It's a. It's again. These are. This is basically just two color, right now. But with, with the bleach, what happens is you start getting some dye messing around with it, and you start to. It, it starts to eat, eat into the color and change things and whatnot. So, um, and I'm losing some of the edges, but I'm also having certain kinds of things that are happening that I kind of like. Um, so yeah, I think I, I probably have. It's yeah, it's a, fugitive, but yeah. It, it's made up out of color, so you get, depending on what you yeah. want, you get right. really interesting color effects. Well, that's one of the things that I've found with, um, I think some with this right now, it, 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 or there is a black that I use. I think it's a, it might not be, it might be a Pilot or a certain brand similar to Pilot, but um, it's, it's like a blue-black. Like, but a, more of a black than a blue. And when you hit it with the with the bleach, it goes to the like an orange. I don't know if any did any of you see. I don't know if you, if you follow my page or check my page out at all on, online. I uh, when Chris Cornell committed suicide, I did a, a memorial piece for him of him. Um, that was actually done with with this with colored ink. I just drew like did an underdrawing of him in colored pencil, just block it in, and then I just paint the whole thing on watercolor paper in black and then I s sprayed bleach and the brown areas that's what happened it's like it went from black to brown and then I went in real real thick almost and you know went in with the bleach and just picked out all of the flesh highlights and stuff and, and then went in um, uh, with col some colored pencils so a little bit of, of uh, you know pastel and, and 
it, uh, it solved, it, it, and again, I, I'm willing to bet that it's relatively archival. Um, I'll take that bet. You know. That's exactly right, as you say. Yeah, you'll be dead later. Right. So, okay. So, uh, this, so I'm just gonna let this dry. Let me just blot it up a little bit, and then I'll kind of hit this with a workable fix. Part of what, what I do also in terms of this stuff is that I love, uh, I don't know where something's gonna lead. So I will, uh, like right now, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to fix this so that probably the next layers of, of bleach and whatnot are not going to make any difference to it. You know, it's like it won't affect it because there's, there's a, uh, you know, it's, it's been set. So I'll hit it with workable fix, let it dry, and then I'll, I'll come in with a roller, which, which is what I do with, with the crystal, uh, with the gesso over the top, the clear gesso. And then we'll see, we'll see what happens in terms of whether, what I start going into with maybe some colored pencil and whatnot. Um, and some opaques, but uh, I mean, again, you can see it's it's really relatively kind of awful, you know. <laughs> but it's uh, you know the, all the values. I mean, the, the, you've kind of I've kind of lost a little bit of the value of the, of the of the entirety of the truck, but uh, but because I'm ostensibly in control, I can make you know I can make those changes. So um, and and bring it back. In theory. So. Uh, let's see. Right. Is there the uh, workable fix? Yeah, because if I if I started to put the the, the uh, clear gesso down on this, what would happen is, and actually, you know, it, there might be a little bit of stuff. You know what? Uh, I'm going to see what happens. I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to dive in with the, with the the roller. And just see. Okay. Is there, is there like a piece that I can, like a, a rag piece or junk, like a junk piece, where I, if I roll, 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 roll over it, it doesn't, like I don't want to use this as, a, yeah, as a, uh, an under. So one of the things that you know you'll see how I work is that I space is a premium for me. <laughs> so I uh, I tend to run out of space fairly fairly easily. Um, a lot of times I will work on the floor. Yeah, you know. No, it's, it's fine. So, uh, now I, I can only assume what's going to happen here is that by Using this without fixing it, some of the colors are probably going to pick up and pollute other areas. And uh, I'm kind of debating whether I should do that or not because I don't. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen uh, or if that's going to be a good thing or not. But nothing ventured. This is matte medium. This is clear gesso. Clear gesso. Clear gesso. Um, it's similar to matte medium, except that this has a. I think it has a little bit more of a tooth to it. It's it's uh it's basically it's, you know gesso without the titanium white that they put into the gesso. It goes down. It looks like it's going down white. So it's kind of like a an oh shit moment. Um, so. <laughs> Thank you. As from the. You can see that you know it's already starting to add, get, grab a little bit of the color. Now this is this is not the kind of roller I usually use. I usually use a foam roller, a house roller. So, see how it's pulling it? It's starting, it's starting to get a little bit of pink going on there, which in a weird kind of way is fine because what that actually is doing is sort of uniting the piece, you know, and uh, 
Yeah, that's what we call it. We'll call it atmosphere. atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. I meant for that to happen. You know. And it starts to blend like it's it's just again, it's just another layer of um, experimentation, another layer of headache, another layer of possibility, uh, another layer of oh shit, you know. Um, so so what I'll have to do is let this dry or hit it with a hair dryer. Yeah. Now what you can also do is take, um, I have, uh, there's these silicone tools, like scribing tools, like paintbrushes. They're, like, they're made like paintbrushes. But you can actually use them um, to pull away, you know, areas. Like if I want, if I actually wanted to go in around, I, I'm only going to use this kind of, instead of a credit card, I'm just going to sort of, you know, you can actually go in and start to move the move the, the gesso around, and when it, what's that? This is uh, I'm just using the cap from an ink, from an ink container right now, so I'm just trying to pull out some of the pollution. See, do you see how that just went right to white? You know, right there. Did you say you wanted Yeah, I'm probably going to use it because if I think if we just waited, it might. Yeah. Going into the, you see, if you, I don't know if you could, if you saw just what happened there, it's like, let's see, I don't think I have any of these. Right. You can unpl unplug the light box. The light box? Yeah. So, uh, what's that? There, uh, it's like other times with the hair dryers, they've actually come out with. Uh, okay, Dad. <laughs> um, they've actually come out with these other kinds of. Uh, I think they're they're called egg dryers. That for people who, who make you know who did all the, the decorative eggs, like, and then what they what they are is they're hair dryers that get the heat they get very hot, but they don't put out a whole lot of uh, hot air in terms of you know blowing it all over the place. Um, so you like if you have a, a a liquid, you know it doesn't go off and shoot it into into multiple arenas, you know. So, are there any questions while we're we waiting for this to run? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Um, yeah, what uh, I've actually used this to adhere, uh, like I almost use it as a, like a, a rabbit skin glue kind of a thing. I, but I'll coat both sides. But what this actually does is it gives it a tooth. It seals the surface, and it also gives it a little bit of a tooth. Yeah, yeah. If it was a, uh, if, it's, uh, if it were a, um, a like a gloss medium or something like that, it would be very, very glossy. But I like it because it creates like kind of a sandpaper texture. Um, And no, no piece is safe. Well, you know, it's like, I'll just, this is, I'll just grab a piece, a drawing. It's like, it's the easiest thing at hand. I know, I know, like, it, it, you may be surprised considering I'm, you know, always so pristine and put together. You laughed a little too hard at that. What I'll usually do is, like, I'll, I'll work on a number of different pieces at once. And uh, so I'll set up this kind of gesso, and then go back to it and let it and let it dry on its own. And there have been times over the winter where I'll actually put it a piece in the oven at 175 and let it sit there for a little while and check on it. You know, after about 10, 15 minutes, it's delicious. <laughs> I 
again, you know, when Bill was talking about mark making yesterday, it's like part of what I'm doing right now is, is it, it's like con trying to control a certain level of chaos, you know. Um, and again, there are pieces that I've done where I am, because I do feel that every line means something, there are pieces that I work on if I'm working on a specific job where I will start in and I will choose the color, first color I want to go down with, um, how light it's going to be. I try, it's almost like I don't have time to make any mistakes. And that sounds kind of weird because I'm going to make nothing but mistakes. But I try to think, it, think through every step of the way. Like here, I have no idea what's going to happen. When I'm working on other pieces, I will put down a very specific color. And it's, it's uh, because I realize that it's, it will be less for me to do and to go back and fix later on. Um, and it's so easy for things to go off the rails at any given point that, uh, that the more control uh, I can have, and, and part of uh, it is, is more control I can have, is, is, you know, it makes it worthwhile. Cause, so what I'm basically saying here is that there are uh, like that level of control and tight, you know, tight reins on something are also part of, uh, this is almost an antidote to that, you know, so that, um, like when I would, in my sketchbooks, if I was working on a project that was very, very um, dark and gritty, my sketchbooks would invariably be cartoony and very light, you know, and, and if I were working on something that was kind of silly, my sketchbooks would get sort of very artsy and dark and sort of, so it was almost like I needed to have both, uh, to achieve a level of equilibrium. It's getting pretty good. Okay. All right. Um, now, let's see, pull out some, maybe pull out some, some colored pencils. Now, first before we go, it's like, um, did you, did you all, Get a, well, let's step, let's get stuff on the back. Did you all uh, did, want to pass this around? Just have you feel what this what this paper feels like, you know? That again, and then I, well, you know, we'll just pass this around and you can bring it, give it back to me. And then you can feel. I want you to feel what this feels like with the with the clear gesso on it. Okay. Um, while you're asking, any any other any questions? No. That's okay. What's that? I'm sorry? Oh. Does the bleach ever like the the No, I mean, as a matter of fact, uh, I, I've been doing things that have been probably but not been as, as, as wise to do for. Um, no, yeah. Once once the gesso's down, it's like you really can't. You, I mean, if I were to put down another layer of the ink, that you know that can be lifted by the gesso, it probably will activate, but it won't go through. It won't permeate the gesso. So in a weird, weird kind of way, I'm sealing certain levels, you know, at at, at certain points. Um, but I've actually used. Uh, uh, every water-based medium I can think of to try to put down on a, uh, on a surface, as long as it stays. But one of, the, uh, one of the pieces I did, I posted a piece last week of, a, of again, another, another truck. But, uh, oh yeah, excuse me, you can say goodbye. Um, I ended up using alkids, uh, which are oil, which are fast drying oils, um, and I've uh, I've done similar thing to what I've done here, is where I'll, I'll paint like right through the, the the lighter areas, and then I'll go in with uh, like Gamsol or some some kind of like turpentine substitute and lift out, you know, and I and because I'm working so thin, uh, so thinly, um, you know, you're not supposed to put oil over uh, over uh, acrylic over oil uh, or Fat over uh, or lean over fat or whatever. What, what is, it? is it fat over lean or lean over fat? <laughs> yeah, but I find that it's uh, since I'm working incredibly thin, it's almost like uh, it's I'm scratching right down to um, like molecules thin. 
layers. So, and again, it's, uh, it may not be completely archival, but it's, it's right now, this is the kind of experimentation place I am in particularly. So, um, because I, I, I've been trying, I, I, I've been, I've planned out so many of the pieces that I work on that, um, it's hard to, I'm trying to figure out the best way to explain my, like the rationale, is that uh, it's, it's a bit like I want to, not that I don't want to try to get that, the, the lines where I go down, like we'll, we'll, make qu we'll make quick doodles, we'll make quick sketches for things as a placeholder. What I try to do is to be as direct and um, not have to make a line twice. So it's like, so, and, and if, it's, if it's in place, great. If it's not, you know, if it zigs and, and, or, and in, instead of zagging, it is what it is. And, um, and it's like trying to, acute, like it's like running uh, like a mile one day and then running a mile and five feet the next day and then a mile. So it's, it's all of this, this little incremental thing of trying to just get all of the, the planning out of the way and just being direct, just being as direct as I can be in, the, in that moment. So, um, and, uh, so and, and to take whatever is thrown at me, you know? Um, you hear the thing about acrylic over oil that it doesn't work because eventually that acrylic will kind of peel off. It will, it. yeah. But if you seal it well enough afterwards, yeah. there should be no reason. For exactly. That. And again, if you work, again, I work incredibly thin. Uh, on this stuff, and uh, like if I'm working on canvases, I'll work. I will maybe work oil over acrylic, which you can do, yeah. but uh, or just keep working in, totally in acrylic, you know. Uh, but uh, but for these pieces on this paper, because I sort of view um, a lot of things that I do on paper as somewhat um, everything is. These are sort of sketches. Everything I, like that I do that like they're just sketches that don't happen to be bound in my sketchbook, so they're they're just uh, you know opportunities again to play. So. Do you use reference for those? Oh yeah, yeah. I'll use a lot of reference, and you know, I mean, I will make some stuff up, um, but that's only, uh, uh, you know, if if I know enough to make up the rep, like make up and fake it, you know. Um, but I, I I tend to like to have kind of reference that that will work. So. How's that piece doing back there? I think your friends took off of it. <laughs> if we could start making, you know, making its way back up here, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we just hit hit the doorway and just take let it go. <laughs> hey guys. Yeah. Send it back up. Don't don't hesitate to add a few lines if you want. So again, and this, this way of working is very different from the way I would work in straight watercolor or something. So, um,
This, again, this is white out. And a lot of times when I, if I start making marks with things, I'm, I'm, sometimes I'm just trying it out to see if it adheres in any kind of a way that, that I feel like I can work with. So um, I'm always jumping from one tool to another to sort of, um, I'm almost like pecking at a piece, of, you know, sometimes as opposed to kind of going in and, and working. This is actually colored pencil. It's art sticks, which is basically a regular colored pencil, but but in a way that uh, is look a little bit more like a pastel. This is just a colored pencil. just started to go in and kind of trying to define some edges and adding, starting to add little bits of definition and color. And because this is gesso, if I wanted to come in with a, with a, a watercolor or a paint or a, you know, like the, the liquid acrylics that Bill was talking about yesterday. You know, as a wash, it'll sit just fine. Level of plasticity is in there that uh, Um, I might be, you know, often I do, or I listen to, you know, sometimes I'll listen to, uh, like, some podcasts or something. Would you like me to sing? <laughs> yes. By yes. all means, yeah. William. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> that would be, that would be most awesome. Mm -hmm. And then now here's where I start to try to figure out what kind of value arrangement I want to play with. So, so I'll go, I go in and, like again, I start, might have an idea of what I want, and that may change as I'm, so I'm, I'm debating whether or not, like I like, in some respects, I like how that's sort of blown out right here, you know? So I'm debating, do I want to go in and really tighten that up, or do I want to, you know, to get some really nice dark values in here? Or do I want to sort of leave it alone? So, but this this mechanism allows me to sort of decide and go back into it and, and change things if I if I want to. Let's get some. Now I'm kind of again, again when I mention everything I'm I'm doing I'm kind of throwing the kitchen sink at this. So, you're, so you're, you're you know I think a couple of you asked about ways of working and I'm sort of what I'm trying to in essence do then is to sort of show that it's a smorgasbord. You know, there's, there's, uh, <laughs> Full scale attack. 
It's yeah. It's it's ba you know it's a total full full scale attack. Technically, technically, it's not a smorgasbord. It's a buffet. A smorgasbord is anybody here from Sweden? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bill. <Yeah. laughs> I stand corrected. It's, oh, sure. it's a buffet. <clears throat> it's a buffet. I had somebody say it. So you just you just you just paid it forward. That's cool. He said you Americans have bastardized that word. Oh yeah, like that's the first thing, the first and only thing we bastardized. <laughs> bastardized the whole world. <laughs> yeah, we did it with class. <laughs> so what is a smuggish board then? Uh, at least a class. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to know what a is. It's, it's basically just uh, like a lot of food thrown, you know, no, out no, on. The real yeah, the real one. The real one? Uh, you explain it to me. Now these are these are this is just gouache, regular gouache. So see their their smokers were big. It's all it's a, at dinner and they have different dishes. But it's not this that sort of thing where they spread it out and you can have every dish. I think everybody stopped listening about five minutes ago. <laughs> just did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of times what I'll do is, uh, it, like, rather than, like, try to mix a certain tint, um, I will go in and, and just keep, like, putting down white, you know, like, trying to, not necessarily, like, I can't bring, might not be able to bring a, a, a surface right back to white fully, but I can definitely um, uh, get approximated. And then I can put down the white, and then I can wash color over it with either colored inks or li uh, like um, liquid acrylic, or with other, you know, other colors that sort of stay, that will stay down. So, so why white out as opposed to laying down no um, I'll do, I'll use that too, but because part of it, what happens is, is that um, if it's a thin line, I'll use because there's a needle point yeah. on the on the white out. Um, allows me to kind of get This, this can be hard on the brushes, but uh, so in addition to the good, really good brushes that you buy or whatever for, you know, for watercolor pa uh, paintings or whatever, there should be some that you get that are, that you know are not going to see, that are not long for the world. You know, they're kind of like the grunts that you send to the, <laughs> to the front lines. Do you, you actually buy expensive watercolor brushes? I have, I have some. But I'll, but I also, I'll, 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 like, I'll go on Dick Blick and I'll buy like the student, right, like a bunch of student brushes, and just because I know that they're like, if I'm, especially if I'm using bleach, yeah, be, you know, it's like they, they just do not. I have one like seventy dollar brush that somebody gave me. Right. Yeah, uh, there's the illustrator Robert Foss that used to go to uh, all of his friends' studios and pick through all of their, their the brushes they were going to throw out and ask for them because he, he always felt it. You know, regardless of whatever 
brush, you know, foibles and, or any problems that the brush had, you could actually go back into, you know, find a use of, for, for mark making, you know. So. Do a lot of blotting, like pushing, putting things down and letting them sort of go wherever they're going to go. Establish kind of a light source up to the side here. This is a paint marker, so I just it's, it's here. I'm going to try it out and see what happens with it. Yeah, it's, that's exactly what this is. It's just, you know, I mean, it may come together, it may not, but like I said, nobody is hurt in the process, hopefully, you know, like, like drinking bleach or... No, because what I what I will do is like even if I if I work on certain sizes of, of image, you know paintings, I will tend to um, I'll scan it in sections, um, and then I'll I'll composite it and work on it in Photoshop. Uh, Yeah, little because uh, it's like the world is the is mostly gray. You know, it's like the, the grays make up the vast majority. It's the jewels, the gems of like a little bit of color that can you know make make a piece really sing. You know, it's uh, it's like what I said about sugar in your coffee. You know, you don't want the whole bag. Yeah, we're sort of trying to figure out a way where, where they can actually go in, where it'll, it will um, it will do the you know the the most aesthetic good. Sure, there's no questions. Say again? You had a teacher? Yeah. Uh, how long did that last and how much do you feel like you used what you learned from that? Well, I, um, I took what, ha what I mean by painting teacher is that um, I, was already started, I was already working in comics professionally. And one of my studio mates, uh, an artist named Joe Chido, C-H-I-O-D-O, -O, um, and I went to Fairfield University in Connecticut and, and took evening classes. Um, with a couple of, like a, a, a Russian painter, I forget his name, for landscapes. And then, um, and then I took a watercolor class with, with, uh, with Robert Baxter. And uh, 
he turned out, turned out to be an illustrator whose work I had seen and whose work I really loved. And the fact that he was actually doing, you know, teaching um, was like, wow, it's like, you know, synchronistic. Um, so I, I took class with him and actually I got to know him quite well. Um, he and his wife, I mean, uh, unfortunately she passed uh, away a number of years ago. I think he's moved to, to France. But um, uh, he was the first person who kind of told me about, you know, uh, how much I was starting to really play with watercolor. And he actually was incredibly encouraging. He said, you can actually make, actually, you know, do really well if watercolor, if you, if you just stick with it. Because watercolor is one of those mediums, it's like in a weird kind of a way, it almost chooses you. Um, and I'll use watercolor uh, kind of almost as an, uh, an antidote to working in acrylic or working like this. Like here, I'm just sort of seeing what happens with watercolor, like I said yesterday. It's, it's literally like I'm, I'm working moves ahead. Do you do multimedia watercolor usually, or just? Um, it eventually, sometimes I think it ends up, you know, that way. But uh, most of your pieces probably not. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's always some level of multimedia, you know, with it. Like, because uh, I, I do like to kind of go back in with some colored pencil, and um, sort of tighten things up. Um, again, when I, if, I'm lay, if I'm laying something out uh, that I need to have light box through, it tends to be like 140 or, or even sometimes occasionally 90, 90 pound. Um, and then I just work as thin and as fast as I can. Um, well, I, 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 partly because if I, 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 depending on what I'm using it for or how I'm approaching it, I will start the drawing right on the paper. You know, like I, have, I have, you know, plenty of sheets of watercolor paper and pads, um, but I find that if I, if I have a drawing and I know where things need to be exactly, I'll just block everything in place, you know, and, uh, and, um, and that way, if, if I mess up, it's like, you know, I don't, I don't go and I don't, or if I erase on the watercolor paper, it, you just ruin the surface. So I tr it's really kind of a, a way to sort of try to save, save the surface um, from, from eventual more, the, more of the, the abuse that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send its way. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of starting to shape up into, into something vaguely resembling, you know, I mean, it's, uh, you know, just coming in, adding layers of wash and color and things. So, and because it's uh, this is gouache, I can go in, I can blot it, lift it, spritz it. I can go in and paint another layer of uh, gesso over it. The one thing about using layers of gesso is that, uh, you have to make sure each one is drying because if you go into it and it gets, starts to get a little too thick, it becomes, it, it doesn't get super hard, so you can actually kind of, like as, as Bill did yesterday, carve into it. You can kind of move it around and it will, it will tend to um, not be as rigid as, as you might want. So. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think it's because he tuned it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
So, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it, this will continue on like this, but, but again, my point, hope, you know, I've been kind of, you know, if I've hit it, hit you over the head with it way too much uh, in terms of, uh, uh, like, I, like I said, I, I, I pretty much promised that I was going to sort of throw myself into the deep end of the pool and see what happens. So, in a way, I mean, I've done that, and, um, you know, there's, thanks for throwing me, a, you know, a lifeline. <laughs> um, but uh, it will, like, uh, it'll continue as, like, you know, like this. So it's, it's, again, it, we, you can have as much fun and, like, so, like, uh, you, you can kind of get into little areas and find, like, here, like, a lot of the stuff that's happening right in here with all the spatter and the, and the, the, um, the bleach effect, you know, um, you know, add some, some kinds of, of interesting things. Now, like, right now, my thought is, uh, I'm trying to think of, determine whether I want to make the tree dark now and actually the, the, or dark in the background um, to keep the tree light um, behind you know so it's uh, kind of interesting to, to just like play yeah side on the move exactly and well, that works. and because it, it you know it may or may not work it's like it's it is what it, you know it is what it is so it's let let it um, and the thing is, is that I will, I could look at this and kind of go, ah, oh, man, that really is off. It just didn't work. And then I'll look at it at the, tomorrow or the next day or a few hours from now and something, and kind of find things that, you know, that I didn't plan that I actually kind of really like about it. So it's, um, uh, it's fun that way, you know. But so the question would be then. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> We're so uh, fucking cordial. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you're, uh, so you're working on a professional job, and, and you're doing this, and you can see that in your work when you work for professional jobs, but it's because you feel like at any point you can, almost any point, you can corral this and make it work, right? Corral? The piece. That you feel like yeah, I mean, so yeah, I, there, I, there are p certain pieces, I, I, I like, my tendency would be to kind of like just push it and just like, and I keep using the phrase hurting it. It's like I want to, I, I, I love the idea of pushing something to see how, 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 how much, I, how close I can come to completely destroying and ruining a piece and, and then making it work. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and you don't know, you won't know until you like kind of walk out on that ledge. It's like, you know, like the wily e. coyote, you know, it's like and you look down and all of a sudden there's, there's, not, there's just air under you. Then you fall, you know. But, um, but if I needed to kind of uh, ground this and kind of, if I had to like, okay, we need this done, what I would do is I, I would just go in and I would make a decision, okay, I'm going to make the trees look darker and I'm going to go in and tighten things up with, with like certain colored inks and add Christmas to it and like go in and sort of fuss, fuss with it and it's like, and then hopefully get, get the check. You know, it's like, yeah. it just, it just, it just I, I will rely on things that I have no, I know will have worked in the past. Here I'm kind of like um, uh, making it up as I go along, which could ultimately mean that I will overwork an area, that I'll work too much into something, and it could just be like it ends up as a, as a big bowl of nothing, you know, a big bowl of, of middle value. Um, and then it's like going back into it and saving it, you know. Uh, what's that expression, like for the first 10 minutes you work on something, you're creating art, for the rest of the time you're just trying to save it, you know. <laughs> yes, I find that to be the case. Do you use value sets for, for jobs? Yeah, I tend, I tend to... Um, Sometimes I do the value studies as I'm working on the piece, like especially if I'm working on certain covers. Um, let's see if I can pull, pull this up. It's, I think, even though this is going live, um, I did a cover for DC with Batman and Wonder Woman. And apparently, um, I, did, I did the one that was not approved. Um, so, I did a couple of different versions of it. I don't know if you, I'm not gonna, don't know if I'll show it online, but I don't know if you can see this. Beautiful. So, now there's two different versions. Of, oh, sorry. Let me get that up again. Let me actually do a screen. Okay. 
That's not digital though. You just under the camera. What's that? Well, I, I'm wondering whether I should. Sh I, I guess I could show it. But. You can cover up the phone. Yeah. 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 This was, there's, these are pretty much the same. Okay. Um, Anyway, I'll, I'll pull it back up. Um, oh, careful, you're getting high close. Oh, there yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Jeez. so this this one, uh, what like for example? It's covered now. Oh, oh, sorry. Get, get out. Of yeah, well, I'm wondering. It, well, I guess I can. I, let's see. Not this one. This one. This one. Do, uh, now, is this which that's, is the one that goes that right goes live? That one. Oh, okay. All right, let's see. Is it upside down? Oh, that's really blown out. Oh, it is, yeah. Yeah, so. Oh, well. All right. All right, tell you what. You know, you just, you just pass it around. It's like. Um, I'm going to stay here. Yeah. But, um, but you can look, I mean, when you're at, to talk about value arrangements and stuff, I'll, I'll um, a lot of times I'll do the value studies as I'm working on a piece. So I'll end up trying, like, I'll run through a list, uh, uh, like, a, like a litany of different values that I want. Yeah. Well, on the screen, because it's one thing that, that is great about Photoshop or any of the digital things is you can go through, you know, like I'll try different various apply modes. You know, if I multiply it or if I soft, soft light it as opposed to hard light it, it has a different thing. Or if I multiply, you know, um, or if I difference it, it, like, you know, 20% will that be something else or you know so it's all these things that like and sometimes they I never know what's going to happen so there's a, that level of surprise and um, and what can happen is is that uh, some again something might be suggested and then uh, you know in the way it's it's coming together but um, uh, most of the time I'll, I'll work up some small thumbnails but if I, if there's a piece I'm working on and I really like want to kind of exhaust all the possibilities very quickly. I'll just like take a, do a sketch and then just run multiple versions of it through, you know, playing with it in Photoshop. So, you know. what's, what's your, um, how do you Photoshop? I mean, what is scanned, what is, I guess, Well, ev every piece of artwork that I do is, it's, it's, I don't, I stop working completely digitally. Mm -hmm. You know, I work, every piece is, is done by hand on one level, it, 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 to a large start, like a large portion of it, either 100% or, um, you know, a vast majority of it. Like all of those figures were all drawn on paper. I might have done several versions of each character. The Batman, I think I did two, two different versions of it. The background, all destroyed buildings and whatnot. I think I, I, I grabbed a, a piece, you know, an image of lightning. I don't think I, I drew that. But um, again, I had to get the piece done before I came here. So. Um, uh, so I do scan actually orig original art, you know, in, and then I'll, I'll pull it into a template for a cover, and then I'll have an idea of what I want to do, but I will, um, let me see, if, if I get that back, there might be another a ba a Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman cover, which I just did, which I can show you as well. So, um, thank you. And uh, what I for this for this one, let me see if I can find it here, which I, I'm sure I can. Um, <laughs> pass this around. Yeah, you can pass it around. It's a uh, you know, it's not it's nowhere near done, but it's. Uh, you know, again, because my point was to just play. Play the Yeah. Well, that's all we do, isn't it? Yeah, it's all it's, it's all we do ever. Yeah, we don't work. Oh, it says no. 